Well, good evening, everyone. This is Bill Breeden, and thank you for joining me for my Constellation Tour number 23. Tonight, we're going to go over Pegasus, the winged horse, which is a grand autumn constellation that fills a, a large portion of the autumn sky. It's located in the northern celestial hemisphere of the sky, and it is best viewed between September and November, so that puts it squarely as an autumn constellation. You see what I did there? Squarely, the great square of Pegasus. Okay, well anyway, um, I have Stellarium set up for a suburban sky with moderate light pollution. 60 degree apparent field of view for September the 8th, 2020 at about 9.30 p.m. And I'm going to show you how to find Pegasus. Um, the Great Square of Pegasus is an autumn signpost and you can use it to find to find a lot of other parts of the sky in the, in the autumn months or even in the late summer. So we're looking east where we can see Pegasus rising and you will see this large square here. It's actually more of a diamond um, early in the evening in the fall as it's rising. And that great square is how you find Pegasus. So you're you're there. Pegasus is shown here. I'll look up a little higher as this square here with these lines drawn off of it. It's actually it's actually represented by a winged horse in the sky. Let me show you what a large part of the sky Pegasus occupies. Here's, here's the square here, and here are the other, the other parts of Pegasus, and it goes all the way, all the way up until it, it actually borders Cygnus and Vulpecula and, on one side, and Andromeda and Pisces on, on the other. So Pegasus is one of the largest, one of the largest areas of sky. And something else I want to show you that I think is kind of neat. Typically, Pegasus is found by locating the Great Square. These four stars here make up the Great Square. You have Shiat, or Beta Pegasi, and you have Markab, which is the Alpha Star. That's Alpha Pegasi. And then you have Gamma Pegasi. So you have these three. And this one in this corner, this is interesting. This one is actually Alpha Andromeda. So even though this star is used to, to build the great square of Pegasus, this one star in this corner is actually across the border in Andromeda. You can actually see there that that, 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 that star there is actually across the border in Andromeda. If they had drawn the constellation lines just a little bit farther over, it, Pegasus would have included this. But the problem is Pegasus already has an alpha star. It's Alpha Pegasi. And this star was already known as Alpha Andromeda. So if they would have redrawn the lines, it wouldn't have even been able to keep its, its bare name its alpha designation, it would have had to take on a new Greek letter. So too much change. So it was left in Andromeda. And even though we do use it to form the great square of Pegasus. So let's go back out to a naked eye view. And again, here's the great square.
there's the star I was looking for. Uh, that that star up there is called Enif, and it's Epsilon Pegasi. So that gives you an idea when you see that star up here off of the bottom right of the square of how far Pegasus extends in the sky. Okay, so let's go out to a dark sky site. Now, Pegasus is not, you can see there's, there's really no Milky Way here to grab your attention like there is up in Cygnus and, and Scutum and Vilpacula. So Pegasus is sort of in an empty area of the sky. It's pretty much a big empty square here. So let's, let's venture off to a dark sky site. Okay, and here's the great square. And you can see there are a few stars inside the square. And here's Enif up here. And we're going to put Enif in our finder scope and take a closer look at it. Enif is a double star. It's also a, it's Epsilon Pegasi. It's a second magnitude star, so it's pretty bright. It has a gold color to it. And it is 689 light years from Earth. So let's have a view of that through an eyepiece and see if it splits. Now, it looks like a double star here in a 13 millimeter Nagler. Um, it, ha it does look like it has a companion. Let's see. I'm not sure if that's if that's actually the double or if Enif splits again. You know I like to split these stars again. No, I guess that's it. So that little star we saw next to it in the eyepiece, that's the double star. So I'm okay with that. That's kind of a nice a nice pretty coupling here. We've got a bright gold and kind of a fainter white star next to it with some other stars in the background. Okay, let's return to our naked eye view of Pegasus. And again, that was Enif, so that one was pretty far up from the square. The square is right here. And I want to point something out. Another thing you can look for is the great square of Pegasus along with these stars here actually form a giant dipper in the sky. And I don't think anyone's ever mistaken Andromeda and the great square of Pegasus for, a, for the Big Dipper, but it, it could be done. I mean, it's much larger than the actual Big Dipper. And we got a little... Here from a dark site, we have a little sneak peek of the Andromeda galaxy. It's actually visible to the naked eye. It's right here. It's part of Andromeda. So there's one Messier object in Pegasus, and it's a globular cluster, M15. So let's do a search for that. And see, it's not inside the square. It's over here closer to Enif. So let's have a look at M15 through the finder scope. And M15 is magnitude 6. Um, it's listed at 32,000 light years from Earth. And through the finder, it appears as a, a bright cluster, a, a tight, bright cluster. So let's look at it through an eyepiece. M15 is pretty. Okay, this is through a 13 millimeter Nagler. But um, it is one of the prettiest globular clusters in the sky, and I don't think it gets enough attention. I think we pay so much attention to, to M13 and, and a couple of others, but M15 is really, really pretty. It's in a really, it stands out because it's in an otherwise sort of empty area of the sky. So take the time to find it. Let me show you where it is in the constellation. So here's the great square, 
and ENIF is way out here. So M15 is just above ENIF in the uh, in the early autumn or late summer sky here in early September. And let's let's have a look at the mythical characters and see how Pegasus is depicted. So Pegasus is the winged horse, and for some reason it's depicted pretty much upside down in early fall or late spring. So Enif looks like the snout. And the great square is pretty much the body of the horse. And then these li the line coming off of the great square is part of Andromeda. Let's see where the boundaries are. Yeah, that's the boundaries of Pegasus here. All the way up to here, including the horse's head, the winged horse's head. Uh, not to be confused with this little horse up here. We'll get to that with another tour. And Pegasus's feet are way over here. So this is a large constellation. Okay, well that about wraps up my uh, tour of Pegasus, the winged horse. Good night and good seeing.